right, so we are here today with Harvey from the Boost Creep and David from Cruise and Motorsports. And on the dyno, we have a 2018 STM. And so one of the reasons that we brought the car here is because, one, we wanted to get a baseline on the 18 STI. And also, we've, we've heard that 18 STIs are making more power, even stock, than what the STIs previously had. So we wanted to put the car on the dyno and see, um, see what it actually is doing. David was kind enough to bring in his brand new 2018 STI for us to get some numbers on. So we did a we did a baseline run and we did a stage one run. So we, at this point, the car now does have the stage one access port on it. Well, let, let's talk about what we saw. Harvey, what did, what did you see just with the stock car? Oh, wow. Well, so I've been, uh, basically, I dyno tune these regularly, but we've always offered a deal where if you buy the access port here, not a plug, well, kind of, yeah. you get a free baseline. So I've, uh, I did that because I wanted to sell access ports, but I've always also wanted to know what these cards make before I put the access port on. So I've always had this data starting in about, I started doing this in 05, and it's been, I have all these years of data, I don't really collect it other than anecdotally, but typically we see about 220 to 230 out of STIs, and that's always been the case, even as uh, Subaru rates the numbers and moves them around. Uh, I remember when it was 290 and then 300 and then 310, something like that, you know, they, they yeah. are 305, yeah, they change their numbers. So for me, it's always been a consistent number at the wheels at altitude on the dyno. So I've never seen that difference. And I was also curious because I've seen uh, some really trustworthy sources. Mike at Cobb posted up uh, one for us to look at uh, privately that showed that the 18 SDI really didn't have anything left on the table like the previous models did at sea level. So I was just curious myself. So thanks for bringing that up here. And we love it. And it's more data that we get. Um, this is the third 18 that I've uh, had my hands on them. The other two I just tuned and they both came in with off-the-shelf maps already in them and we didn't do baselines. They had intakes and things like that which, that didn't allow us to do baselines. So so this is, so you, you've heard this too, that the 18 STIs are, are making more power and that the map is, like the map from Subaru is a lot closer to a Cobb Stage 1 map yeah. you know, than, than maybe you know, the previous STIs. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And I'd, I'd agree with that based especially on what we're seeing today. What I saw today was the leanest stock STI I've ever seen, which is about 11, 2, 11, 5 to 1 AFR. Usually they're in the mid 10s. And that's usually where Cobb leaves it um, from my experience. Uh, also, uh, the most interesting thing I saw today is that this car on the stock mapping was losing maybe only one horsepower per pull, but it was losing power per pull. And there was this uh, signature here where it actually drops. The first pull actually did better and it dropped pretty drastically. Um, but these represent sort of the second and third pull, which are very close to each other. So it's really what the car wants. And we can see that it wants to pull out timing up there. It's lean up there. It's probably a little hot of a tune. So this uh, is the, the, the dip in the torque at about, was it about 6,000 RPMs, 57? Yeah, about 58. Uh, so the, or no, about 54, I'm sorry. Uh, so that's different. Um, the, the good news is when we put the cop map on it, it actually picked up power with each pull. Uh, so the Cobb off the shelf map was actually able to not only not pull timing out in distress, but even though we're, uh, we did the stock pulls first, so there's more and more heat with each pull uh, that we can't get rid of without, you know, we're using fans, but uh, there's definitely going to be a little more heat each time. Uh, even though we, were, we had been doing repeated pulls, it was still gaining power uh, with each pull, and it didn't appear that it was pulling out any timing at all. I was actually able to watch the access port on those pulls. So and one of the first things we saw was that uh, it wide open throttle, especially in the upper RPM range, it was uh, richer, uh, richer at the tailpipe than it was with the stock map. Yeah, it was. They richened it up a bit. It's in the 10.5 range is what I saw. Yeah, so maybe so. Subaru's being a, you know, really aggressive to, to try and get out everything that they can with the stock mapping, but they're just being a little bit, a little bit, you know, they're not aggressive enough with the fuel. So they're just, they're sure. just a little bit too much. Yeah, that may be the case. I, I, I'd have to see more cars. I mean, this could just be a fluky car as well, so I'd hate to make uh, a final determination off just the one car. We can keep moving with more of these, hopefully. <laughs> right, right. Well, and, and the other thing that we saw with the Stage 1 map is that even though peak power-wise, there wasn't really any gains or significant gains, but torque-wise, and, and uh, so there was a lot of gains with torque, and in the lower RPM range, there was a lot of gains it was about five uh, you know, in the mid-range. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, the, the, I, I'd agree with that. So I think not only is there gains, but you can see through the smoothness, it's a way better calibration than what you come in with. And that makes me feel better about the safety of the car. Just knowing that cars that are happy on the dyno typically don't have 
choppy curves that are bouncing around like that. So. Right. Yeah, so it's more consistent, more mid-range power, and it's actually a little bit richer and wider than throttle, so maybe a better tune. Yeah, yeah, I'd agree with that. Yeah. Cool. And I don't give other tuners props too often. Yeah. No, I do. <laughs> well, and it's, I mean, it's a good starting point, and we've got more planned for this car, so we'll probably get back and maybe get another chance to you know, take another look with some more miles on the car. Uh, you know, if anything you know, changes or loosens up, you know, once we put a, little, a couple more parts on the car, but you know, it, it's consistent with, with results we've seen, but not better than what you've seen. Sure. Too. So it's not, at least what we're seeing is it's not. Yeah, and I feel like these cars probably do make a little more power at sea level, but I think, uh, like many turbo cars, where it's not maxed out at sea level, it's probably closer to maxed out by coming up to this altitude. So we right. see that difference by coming up here. So um, it could be just the fact that we're, we're you know, a mile of elevation, 5,000 feet of elevation, the air is thinner, the turbo's having to work harder to make you know, the same, or, or close to the same boost pressure here at elevation than what it would at sea level. Yeah, and that's true, and we know that because even at sea level and at end up here, the, the stock turbo falls off, everyone knows the stock STI turbo falls off and boost at the higher RPMs. So by moving it to a higher altitude, that's only more stress on the uh, compressor yeah. and on the efficiency of the turbocharger. What was, on, on the Sport Shark map, how much boost was it making? Uh, 17 pounds is the most I saw, yeah. So 17 pounds on the stock turbo at this elevation. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah, it's appropriate for a nice safe tune. I'll sometimes go as high as 18 if the, it's, you know, cars are individual, so some cars, if we're pushing hard on a warm day and it likes 18 and it makes better power at 18, I'll do it. Some cars actually, max out at 16 and stay the same at 17 and 18 in those cars. Why go there if it doesn't add anything to it? So some of the some of the cars I'll actually back down lower than what I even think is correct. So that's the beauty of having a dynamometer that can measure things is that right. sometimes, you know, I, I know I could probably give anyone a great tune off the in my sleep, but uh, individual cars are going to be different enough right. that it's nice to custom tailor those tunes for those cars. So hopefully, you know, as time goes on, you'll see more 18, you'll kind of get a, you know, more chances to get a sense for like is this consistent with the other cars or not. Yeah. Um, but you know, it makes sense like what we're seeing with the fueling that at sea level it probably is making 20 horsepower more because it is an aggressive map. Yeah. Right? But up here just at altitude maybe you know. Yeah maybe it's 91 as well maybe it makes more on the 93 and sure. on 91 it's a lot less happy which is I see that a lot more in modern times um, yeah. for sure with more modern engines. Yeah. Um, so that's true. Uh, another thought I have is maybe the bigger brake rotor is a little oh, more inertia yeah. that we're losing larger some wheels. of the gains. Yeah, larger yeah. wheels, all that. Maybe on, on the at the wheels we, we uh, are seeing a lower number, but that doesn't that doesn't coincide with what people are seeing at sea level. Right. So I'll, right. I'll say that's just a thought. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's clear that the map stock map is aggressive. Like Subaru has definitely changed something, and they've gotten more aggressive with it. It's, it's probably one of the first STIs where the stock and stage one map power wise are the same. Yeah. You know, usually there's there's a decent amount of power, like 15, maybe even 20 horsepower. We did see eight at the end, and and yeah. perhaps if we had kept going with the stock one, since it's lowering itself, it would have gone lower. And yeah. if we had kept doing pulls on this one, it's picking up about a a, yeah. a horsepower or two per pull. Sure. Uh, and that's as learning occurs, I'd imagine. Or maybe as things heat up. I, I can't say what the exact reason is, but usually when we're doing a long tuning session, there's enough pulls that we can see the averages and see yeah. things. So. Well, it's one of the cool things that you hear people finding something, but to actually put a car on the dyno and, and find out for yourself, see what this car is doing, see what's happening at altitude, it, it's, it's a good starting point. It's a good, good piece of information to have. Yeah. So now it's, you know, there, there's definitely an advantage to put in the stage one map on it. But now, well, what else are we going to put on the car? And then bring it back and, and see where we go from here. Sure, yeah. Yeah, there's been some great data today. Should we move on to the, the vacuum and the crankcase and stuff like that? Oh, shh. That's, oh, okay. that's, that's a whole other. <laughs> that's right. That's a whole other video. Yeah. So oh, stay right. tuned. <laughs> cool. Well, thanks very much, Harvey and Dave, for, yeah, no for the time. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. There's, there's going to be more from this car. So um, yeah, it's our new our new shop car. So we'll be we'll be doing all kind of cop goodies and IAG goodies and you know yeah we'll, we'll we will definitely be back and see what Cobb Stage Three with flex fuel will lead to this car. Yeah. So yeah, I'd love that. Yeah. That's There's no off the shelf for that one. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that's where we're going to have to tap you for your expertise. <laughs> yeah, and we'll do it just right. So I, I love it. Yeah. Cool. That would be great. Well, thanks so much for watching and stay tuned. There's going to be more with the uh, Cruiser Motorsports 18 STI. Bye, guys. <laughs> awesome.